In this lesson, we'll begin layering in additional color and value to build up our character's hair. All right, fantastic. So this is kind of where we left off in the previous lesson. I went and cleaned up the edges just a little bit, and I'll probably do that as we progress through the hair uh, in between lessons. So um, we've got our highlights laid in, and we're ready to go ahead and bring in some additional color and value. So um, now we worked off of this tab in the illustration colors uh, before, and we can start working our way over into this tab here. But if we were to say grab our medium uh, medium broad nib here and uh, maybe select this color and kind of pull that in you can kind of see how that compares to some of the colors that we were achieving off of this other tab so um, we can kind of come in here and start to play uh, now again we wanted to kind of go with a sandy blonde hair um, with a little really geared more towards brown with a few blonde highlights in it so um, we have the ability now to bring in some additional uh, warmth into that hair some warmer colors like these reds eventually so uh, but we do need to build up to that so uh, looking here kind of at what we've got um, I believe this one was the one that we ended up going with for a, a large uh, majority of the hair so uh, let's go ahead and saturate a little bit more and go a little darker maybe with a color like this one here and we'll just kind of come in here and start to again layer this in now in doing this we're going to think about kind of the volumes of the hair too and thinking about the light source and where that light source is as opposed to kind of the areas that we're working on so um, for example right now I'm kind of working this area behind the hair kind of between the the underside of her ponytail and the back of her neck knowing that the light source is really not hitting that area near as much so uh, we'll come in here and just again start to sort of layer this in now we do have a little bit of hair that's over here off of her left shoulder that we definitely need to not forget about. So we'll come in here and work that a little bit as well. And you know, we remember we can always take these and, and run them kind of lightly to get kind of a light mixture of color or we can start to layer them up and get a little darker. So let's maybe check out this one next to it. It's not quite as warm, but it's a little bit darker, so kind of working our way to the point where we can kind of get to some of these colors over here. If we need to bring a little warmth in, again, we can start to bring in some color on top. Uh, let's maybe grab this one here and see what that does. That's actually pretty, pretty warm, so... Now, if I ever get over, like, into the hair on the side of her head, like that right there, I can come in again with my colorless blender and just run that over it really quickly. So, not too concerned about that. We are going to try and be a little bit careful, and we are going to shrink down our brush just a little bit. So, right now, I'm, I'm working with at about 15. You can see that there. Uh, we also need to take into consideration this opposite side of the hair as well. So, um, thinking about how the light source is going to not hit some of these edges on the opposite side. And even some in this crevice right here, uh, where her hair has a natural part in it. Maybe go with a little bit larger brush here. Sort of like that. Now, again, we can always hit the S key on our keyboard to cycle over to the eraser. Remember, that is the last uh, brush that I was using, and uh, I can swap to that with the S key on my keyboard. Just come in and clean that up really quickly here. That's starting to look pretty good. Let me swap back to my medium broad nib, and let's start to maybe bring in some more warmth here. Um, let's see what this one looks like. We'll just zoom out and kind of test it over here. Um, I believe, uh, which one were we using here? We weren't quite using that one. Let's see what that looks like, though. Uh, back off a little bit on the warmth on that and just kind of start to blend in some of these colors.
Notice that you don't have to necessarily use the colorless blender mode to uh, to get the blending that you're looking for. We can always come in here and uh, maybe choose another color and use that to achieve that. I'm actually going to kind of clean up some of these areas really quickly here. I don't want to uh, get too much into my highlights. Uh, let's maybe go back to this one here. Turn off my colorless blender. I'm going to shrink that down some and start to pull out some of these areas like this here. Where there's going to be some natural uh, shadows that are collecting. And we're going to come in here just sort of like that. Start to run this particular color down that part. And again, we can start to kind of hammer away at this side opposite our light source as well. Kind of bringing out some of the volumes of these uh, pieces of hair. All right, fantastic. So uh, again, just constantly working darker and darker. So not forget about these areas down here. Kind of pull out some areas underneath maybe, like so. Kind of blend those together. All right, fantastic. Now, you'll notice that I'm really kind of, when it comes to these really thin strands of hair, I'm not paying too much attention to those. I know that I can come in and I can run a colorless blender and, and blend the light value. Um, if I'm really, really careful, maybe even take something like this super brush and uh, use it in colorless blender mode to kind of blend some of that back. Just like so. Uh, do need to try and be as careful as possible, but understand that these uh, these really thin strands of hair are very, uh, very thin and easy to accidentally get on top of if we're using our medium broad nib. So uh, we'll kind of shrink that down a little bit, work some of these areas over here. Just like so. Now we're again constantly zooming out, kind of evaluating the work that we're doing here. So uh, let's come in and grab even a darker value and start to kind of hammer away. Notice that um, when it comes to getting really dark values, even if we were to grab say, something like this and start to go at this hair that's really kind of back here, uh, it's hard to get close to black. Uh, you can only get so dark. So uh, we may actually have to come in and use that special black marker that we used earlier in this course. Uh, but I definitely want to do everything I can not to use that uh, here, especially early on. So we're going to kind of come in and blend that together a bit more. Now, naturally, if we're going to be using that, we'll want to use some of the grays here in the warm grays before we uh, uh, finish this off. But again, remember working light to dark. So not too concerned right now with uh, uh, the absolute darker values because we're still at the, in the process of sort of building that up. And if we get a little too heavy in areas, don't forget just to blend it in. You can see how that blending uh, actually takes some of the value out of it. Trying to kind of pull in some darker browns in that area where the ponytail is being kind of constrained by that, uh, I'm not sure what they call that where you are, I've, I've always called that a scrunchie, but I know there's probably a technical term for that thing that uh, she's wearing in her hair. And just come in here and darken that up a bit more. Great. So um, you can already see how these values are really starting to make the hair pop a little bit. Now we are staying away from these highlights to the best of our ability, um, but we are still what I would consider 
probably quite a ways away from being done with the hair. So um, in the next lesson, let's go ahead and pick up where we're leaving off here and continue adding value and color to our character's hair.